Hey guys, John here. Today's pigments patch is going to be a little bit creepy, and I'm sure you know what this is, so here we go. Alright, so that's basically kind of a creepy type of bell sound thing that has some, some nice detuning stuff on it. So uh, it's always fun to play that melody with sounds like this. So let's get into this patch over here. So on our effects panel here, we're using about five here. So let's turn these off for now. I guess we could just turn it off from here. And then we are using no utility engine. So don't worry about this guy. We are using the wavetable. Let's turn this off. And we're using the first one. Let's leave this guy on. So basically the first thing that we're going to be doing is this wavetable over here. We're not changing the position. We're actually just using this first shape over here, which sounds pretty cool. This wave table is called Pro versus Waves 1, and it's found in the synthesizers category towards the bottom and also towards the bottom in this list as well. So with this one here, the coarse tuning is up one octave. So we have something like this. And already there, we're pretty much halfway there with that type of tonality, right? From here, it's just kind of carving it out, spicing it up, adding some stuff and effects. Really, it's not too complicated for this one here. It's actually quite simple. But there's some small little adjustments that kind of make things pretty cool here. So, for example, this fine is constantly bouncing left and right on LFO1. So let's take a look at LFO1 and see what this is doing. So this is on free running, right? Because we don't want this re-triggered every single time because then our fine tuning is going to be predictable and we don't really want that, right? We kind of just want it going in tune, out of tune, moving random spots and all that. So which is why this is gonna be selected on the random waveform over here. And then on smooth, we're kind of just bringing this up about 723 milliseconds. So it's not too choppy as you can kind of see this blue light move and it's kind of just doing its own thing. We could have totally used a random, but for this situation an LFO works fine here as well. So going bipolar, as you can see down over here, free running and then we're modulating this slightly by 0.13. So just a little bit of that effect. So really every note that we hit, this LFO is moving in all sorts of different spots, so it's always going to have a slightly different tune to it as well. Now for our voices of unison, we have two voices for this here, and the detune's 1.97%. Not too crazy, and this is going to filter number one, which is the multimode, which we're going to talk about in a little bit here. Next up we have wavetable number two, or engine number two, which is also wavetable, and this is using the same same wavetable, right? So pro versus waves one, and same here, pro versus waves one here. Now the difference in this one is we didn't change any tuning. So remember this one was up one octave right over here. And then the second one is just default. So you have a lower sound to this, right? And for this one, we have the voices at two for the unison and then the detune is 1.50. Now we're not gonna be doing the same thing in modulating the fine, really the first one is gonna be carrying that over here. So this guy as opposed to this one. Because this is kind of a little bit more of a lower register, right? So it's, it's an octave down. So we really don't need to put that fine tuning. You can, but I think it kind of works just fine with the higher notes because we're a little bit more sensitive to those types of frequencies. So this is both of them playing together. Okay, so what else do we have on engine number two? I believe that is it here. Yep, and this one's going to filter number one as well. So before we get into the filters here, the envelope's quite important as well, because with this type of bell sound, right, we hit it and we kind of want it gone pretty quick. So we're here for the attack. We have one millisecond, decay 849 milliseconds, no sustain, because that wouldn't really make sense. And then we have the release at 798 milliseconds. Attack curve is going to be zero. Decay curve is going to be negative 5.92, because the decay and the decay curve is going to be very important for a patch like this. And if you want more decay time you just really have to increase this here like if this is too slow you can have something like that let's undo that or if you want it to be quicker it's really up to you to see how much that uh the decay sounds and then if you want to have a different curve obviously we're going to go and reach for this decay curve because that is a very important knob especially for this type of sound so let's take a listen to that So these two knobs here, they kind of work well together. They work in tandem. They're kind of inseparable in that sense. So moving on from there, we didn't have the utility engine. So let's turn these uh, 
both engines here on. And let's take a look at the filter. So the first one is going by default through the multi-mode, which as you can see here, I'm not really doing any filtering to this one because this is already one of those higher content type of sounds. So we really don't want to take away what we're trying to make, right? So this one's kind of left at default at 20K. There's no modulation, nothing done with this filter. However, as we see the filter rounding, we're going out of this filter and then into this next one. Now, the reason for that is I picked this one on a high pass to kind of roll off some of the lows and also to just pass it through this filter. Because I don't know if you're aware of this or not, but you can also always get a different tonality, even if you just run your signal through a different filter in pigments and don't even really change the cutoff or the resonance. You just get it processed through that filter and you get a slightly different sound, which is kind of cool. On some patches, I'll just pop on the MS-20 regularly, not change any cutoff or resonance, and you just get a different sound to it. So something to, uh, to mention there. So we basically have this now. So we're kind of there, and then we go over to our effects, and let's see what's going on over here. So let's turn off uh, B over here. Let's focus on A. So the first thing that th this thing is going to hit is going to be a distortion. So without the distortion, we turn it on here. So the cool part about this, we're on soft clip here. The drive is going to be at 33.6 dB, and this is on a macro over here on the distortion here. So the max value of this would be 0.39 or 39%. Now the cool thing with this here is we wanted that we want that degraded type of sound, right? So something kind of creepy. It's going to be dissonant, maybe some detuning kind of stuff, and then some distortion kind of works nice for something like that. Next up, it hits a bit crusher. Now this makes it just a little bit more dirty because if it's too clean, it kind of just sounds not as good, maybe a little bit cheesy or something like that. So with our bit depth, we have 6.89 bits. We are adding a little bit of down sample at two times, the jitters all the way at one. We have smooth selected, and then we're not really worrying about these high pass and low pass, which is going to be 20 hertz and 20K. The dry wet's going to be down manually, but it's controlled by macro number two, which is the distortion as well. So keep in mind, both of the distortion and the bit crusher are working on macro number two. And this is going to be a max value of 0.50 or 50%. From there, we hit a delay. So this one is going to be a 1 over 8 dotted note. The fine has changed a little bit at negative 0 0.086, feedback 0 0.140, stereo width 0 0.808 on ping pong, which is kind of important for this. High pass is going to be 269 hertz, low pass 5,365 hertz. The dry wet's going to be down 0, but modulated by macro number 3 at 0.36. So we have something like that. Next up, we have another delay here. So this one's kind of working in tandem with the next one. So after those delays get processed, it goes into a pitch shifting delay. Kind of gives us a little bit of dissonance. So this time here is going to be 1 over 8, the spray 16.6 milliseconds, pitch shift down negative 0.25. And this is important too because we're just adding a little bit of pitch shift to these delays. We don't want too much, but we just want to detune slightly, right? Next up, the feedback is going to be 0 0.250. High pass is going to be 181 hertz. Low pass, 5,618 hertz. Stereo detune, 34.2 cents. And the stereo opposite is going to be 0. The dry wet's going to be a little bit lower for this one at 0.18 or 18%. Last up, we have the shimmer. And it's really that tail that we're kind of going for that just detunes something, just doesn't sound right, it's dissonant. They can play these at two octaves at the same time. Yeah, it's a fun patch to play. So basically for this one, the whole concept, right? We want that reverb, we want that space, but we also want that reverb to be detuned as time goes on here. So this pitch shift here is going to be down one semitone, which I always find that gives a nice dissonant sound to it. The feedback is going to be 0.264, size 28.8, modulation 1, high pass 200, low pass 7,000, ducking, which is going to be important for this one at 0.448. And the reason that because of that is this is we're hitting lots of notes fast, right? This is a kind of a plucky belly sound, so it's a quick attack, and we don't want it to be swallowed in reverb while we're playing this patch, right? We want the reverb, but we also want that plucky, attacky sound. We want the best of both worlds, and this is what this knob is perfect for. So 0.448 for the ducking. Don't miss this one over here. Stereo width is going to be 0.750, and the dry wet's going to be 0 
all the way down for manual, but it is modulated by macro number four, which is reverb at 0.31. So basically we talked about the distortion macro that makes sense our delays are basically the first these two delays here and then our reverb which is the shimmer now the one we didn't talk about is this fm over here so this guy is kind of interesting because it's a slightly different tonality it's very minimal but take a listen to this it's really on the very top end of things that we kind of hear like a, almost a metallic -y kind of sound So we're getting a slightly different timbre here. Now this one is controlling this frequency mod over here at a small amount at 0.15. So that's the macro that this one is attached to here. As we can see, the same thing is reflected in this view as well. So if you like this patch and you'd like to get it for free, there's a link in the video description below and it can be yours. And yeah, hopefully you learned something and we'll play us out with Halloween. <laughs> <laughs>